Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman. I want to talk to you about uh, stoichiometry problems. All right, so we're going to look at two different types of stoichiometry problems. Uh, the one that I refer to as the classic type of stoichiometry problem is your mass to mass problem. And so what we mean by that is if you start out with a certain amount, uh, let's say 15 grams of chemical A, then how much, how many grams of chemical B can you make, or how many grams of the other reactant do you need to go along with that chemical. So we're going to take a known quantity uh, through the three-step stoichiometry problem. We're going to convert first into moles of the known. So if I say I have 10 grams of silver, how much copper can I make? Then I need to convert from silver mass into moles. And so the first step, if you're given the grams of the known chemical, is we're going to divide by molar mass. So mass divided by molar mass gives you moles. Once you have the moles of one chemical, the known chemical, we got to convert that into, well, how many moles of the unknown chemical can I produce, like we did in the mole ratio tutorial. So we're always going to multiply the number of moles of the known by the ratio unknown over known. So we're going to balance our chemical equation. However many moles of the unknown is in that balanced chemical equation, we put that on top, and we're going to divide that by how many moles of the known based on the chemical equation. Uh, that'll give you the moles of the unknown, what we're trying to find out. And then if the question asks, how many grams of unknown can you make, the last step then is to multiply it by the molar mass. So we got three-step problem. We're going to go mass to moles of the known by dividing by the molar mass. We're going to go from moles of the known chemical into moles of the unknown chemical by multiplying by the mole ratio, unknown over known. And then step three is we're going to go from moles of the unknown chemical into mass, into grams of the unknown chemical by multiplying by the molar mass of the unknown. So let's use the equation that we used in our lab. We did the silver nitrate copper lab. So there's a single replacement reaction. Copper will link up with the nitrate because copper is more reactive than the silver. That kicks silver out. Copper nitrates that blue liquid in the end, and we saw the silver crystals in the end. All right, so this is our equation. It's not balanced because silver has a plus one charge, and copper has a plus two charge. Uh, that leads us to having more, needing more silver for the reaction to take place than copper to compensate for the, the charge difference. So the equation is balanced. Uh, so our question might be something like this. If we start out with excess, naturally let's do this since that way I can we apply the mole ratio. Let's say we have excess silver nitrate and we have one gram of copper. One gram of copper reacts with this excess silver nitrate. How much silver metal should we get? So we look at the problem. We say, what is our known? What do we know? This is the known. What are we trying to find out? silver, so this is the unknown, so this is what we're starting with, and because it gives us the mass, we have to convert that into moles. So to set up dimensional analysis, you're going to take what you know, put it over top of one, so we, you know we're starting off one gram of copper. Because we have excess silver nitrate, that means we have plenty. It is not going to affect how much of the silver we can make. The fact that we only have one gram of copper, that is going to run out first. That's going to limit how much silver we're going to make. And then copper nitrate isn't mentioned. So we can put a light cross through that, knowing that we don't need to use these or worry about these two chemicals. So this copper can make how much silver? All right, so the next step is we're going to divide by the molar mass. So one mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams. We're going to multiply by the ratio unknown. So my balanced chemical equation, the unknown is silver. That's what I'm trying to find out. And the balanced chemical equation says we can make two moles of silver for every one mole of copper. So unknown goes on top, the two is in front, so two goes on top. The known what we started with, there's a one in front of it, goes on the bottom. And so grams of copper cancel, moles of copper cancel. So now we know how many moles of silver if we were to solve right now. We want to know how many grams of silver. So the last step, if we look at our three-step process, is to take the moles of unknown multiplied by the molar mass to find the mass. And so that's what we're going to do. Silver is 107.87 grams per mole. 
moles of silver cancel. And so I don't have the number here, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate this as you do. So go ahead and pause. If the number is on top, that means you multiply by it. If the number is on the bottom, it means you divide by it. So it's going to be 1 divided by 63.55 times 2 times 107.87. And sig fig wise, we have to round to three sig figs since this measurement only has three sig figs. This one has four, this one has five. These one moles, two moles, one mole, those are exact counted numbers, so we don't have to worry about just factoring these in for sig figs. So I get we get 3.39 grams of silver as our answer. All right, we're going to do one more mass to mass problem, and in the next tutorial, we'll get into particles to particles. A slight twist to this. All right. Next one, let's say we have magnesium metal, like we did in the magnesium crucible lab. The synthesis of magnesium oxide. Solid magnesium will react with oxygen in the air to make that white, chalky solid called magnesium oxide. This is not balanced. Magnesium, we need two here, two here to compensate that oxygen is found around us in pairs. And we're going to do this just so we have to look at the ratio one more time. Like normally magnesium would be the limiting reactant. Oxygen, we have plenty. But let's just pretend that we have excess magnesium. And let's pretend that we have a nice even 10 grams of oxygen gas available to us. How much magnesium oxide can we make? So we don't have to worry about this once it's balanced because we have excess. It will not factor into our calculations. This is our uh, uh, excuse me. This is our known. Sorry. We know that we have 10 grams of oxygen available. This is our unknown. This is what we're trying to find out. How much can we make of this? So take what we know, 10 grams of oxygen. I like to label the chemicals involved. So that way I'm sure of what I'm working with here. Since I'm going to be working with two different chemicals in the same problem. We're going to divide by the molar mass. One mole of oxygen is 16.00 times 2, which is 32 grams. We now have moles of oxygen. We're going to multiply next by the second step, the ratio, the mole ratio. Unknown, so two moles of magnesium oxide can be made for every one mole of O2. So moles of oxygen cancel, leaving us with moles of our unknown. And the question asks, what is uh, the mass? What, how many grams? So the last step is to say, all right, one mole of magnesium oxide weighs this much. So magnesium is 24.31, oxygen is 16. To add this together, we get 30 or 40.31 grams per mole. All right, so moles are canceled. And leaving us with grams, which is what we want. So once again, we're going to take 10 divided by 32 times it by 2 times it by 40.31. So pause. And when you have an answer, come on back here. All right. So I got 25, and we can keep four sig figs here. 25.19 grams of our product. All right, so that's what we call the three-step classic mass-to-mass stoichiometry problem. I hope this helps.